Ever heard of the internet's original troublemakers? They weren't just hackers. They were part punk rock, part cyber pranksters, and full-on legends. This is the story of the Cult of the Dead Cow, a hacking group so influential that even presidential candidates were once members. Yep, you heard that right. Stick around as we dive into their wild ride from small town Texas to global infamy and, spoiler alert, how they helped shape today's hacking world. Grab your modems, folks. This is going to be a bumpy ride. It's 1984 in Lubbock, Texas. The hair is big, the music is loud, and a teenager named Kevin Wheeler, a.k.a. Grandmaster Ratty, is glued to his Apple II computer. Forget football or prom, Kevin's world revolves around dial-up modems and bulletin boards, the prehistoric ancestors of Reddit. But Kevin wasn't satisfied with just swapping software and chatting online. He and his friends wanted to make a statement. They started a bulletin board called Demon Roach Underground, and more importantly, created the Cult of the Dead Cow. Now, the early cult wasn't your typical hacker group. They weren't out stealing credit card numbers or overthrowing governments. They were pranksters. Think of them as Monty Python meets the Matrix. Their weapon of choice? Satirical text files or T-files filled with absurd instructions. One legendary file detailed how to create a gerbil feed bomb. It was a parody of those anarchist handbooks. Was it useful? No. Was it hilarious? Absolutely. But as the internet grew, so did the cult's ambitions. They weren't just writing jokes anymore. They were taking on serious issues. They coined the term hacktivism, using hacking as a tool for social justice. Basically, they decided, hey, let's save the world, but make it edgy. They started hacking for a purpose, calling out companies and governments for poor security practices and human rights abuses. It was like Robin Hood, but with computers instead of bows and arrows. In 1998, the cult made headlines with their most controversial creation, Back Orifice. Named as a cheeky jab at Microsoft's back office software, this tool allowed users to remotely control Windows computers. Imagine Microsoft as the Titanic and Back Orifice as the iceberg yelling, Hey, you've got a hole in your hull. While it forced companies to take security more seriously, it also gave bad actors a new toy to play with. The cult called it a teaching tool. Critics called it chaos. Either way, it was iconic. Let's hit pause for a second. Back in the 80s and 90s, hacking was, let's call it charmingly simple. Modems screamed like banshees, and hackers relied on creativity, social engineering, and a lot of patience. It was like solving a Rubik's Cube while blindfolded and underwater. Today, Hackers have AI-powered botnets, ransomware, and tools that can automate attacks at lightning speed. But here's the twist. The core techniques, exploiting human error and weak systems, haven't changed much. It's like fashion. What's old becomes new again, only more terrifying. Now, let's talk about the people behind the cow skull logo. Peter Mudge Zotko became a cybersecurity rock star, advising Congress and running DARPA projects. And then there's Beto O'Rourke, yes, that Beto, who as a teenager went by Psychedelic Warlord. Imagine explaining to your campaign manager, oh yeah, I used to be part of an edgy hacker group. No big deal. But that's the magic of the CDC. They were hackers, yes, but they were also poets, musicians, and dreamers. The cult of the dead cow didn't just hack systems, they hacked ideas. They showed the world that hacking isn't just about breaking things, it's about fixing what's broken. Their ethos lives on in modern cybersecurity, from ethical hacking certifications to today's hacktivist movements. The internet we use every day is safer and more accountable because of their work, their humor, and yes, their rebellious spirit. The Cult of the Dead Cow reminds us that the digital world is a place of infinite possibility, where rebellion meets innovation and where even a group of misfit teenagers can change the world. If their story intrigued you, hit that like button, subscribe to Net Noir, and join us for more stories from the thrilling world of cybersecurity. And remember, in the digital age, knowledge is power.
and curiosity is the ultimate tool 